Hello, my name is John Arden, and I'm very honored to be invited by the Delphi Group to come to talk in Melbourne and Brisbane in May of 2015. We're going to be focusing on how to help people who have been traumatized and give them a roadmap for relief, for a way of moving on in their life so they no longer are, are experiencing those flashbacks, those tense feelings, hypervigilance, and the whole sequela of different types of anxiety-like symptoms. To do so, we're going to cover a lot of brain-based concepts. And these brain-based concepts can actually be explained to them uh, by giving them a sense of a user's manual for their own brain. We're going to talk about neuroplasticity. We don't necessarily need to use the word neuroplasticity with them. We can actually talk about rewiring the brain. Now, to rewire the brain, we need to help them understand that it's not all about achieving a sense of comfort. And in fact, the way out of the jam, the way out of the rut, requires a certain amount of discomfort. To rewire the brain, they need to be a little edgy. I'm going to explain how neuroplasticity actually occurs. One very unfortunate experience that occurs with many people who have experienced chronic stress, chronic depression, and trauma is the reduction in the size of the hippocampus. This is this area of the brain that lays down explicit memories and one way to regeneralize, re rework, revamp, uh, uh, to rekindle new neurons in the hippocampus is through neurogenesis. Now, neurogenesis occurs under certain conditions. There's this wonderful protein that's available to us all called brain derived neurotrophic factor, but we can refer to it as miracle grow that is released in our brain under certain conditions. For example, one of those very powerful conditions is aerobic exercise and good diet and then cognitive exercise thereafter. We're going to talk about the whole sequence of rewiring the brain and neurogenesis and what needs to be done so that these areas of the brain can revitalize. Another area that we're going to talk about is referred to in the neuroscience literature as affect asymmetry, but we can explain it by talking about there being two halves of the brains, two hemispheres, and two front sides of the brain, we call them prefrontal cortexes, and how they differ in terms of how they manage emotion. For example, we know that people that have been traumatized and or are experiencing a great degree of anxiety and depression are hyperactive on the right prefrontal cortex and underactive on the left prefrontal cortex. Well, you may think, well, geez, okay, it's interesting to know that, but what do I do about it? Well, one way to get the right prefrontal cortex even more overactive is to withdraw or avoid what makes you anxious. Now, what happens with people who have been anxious. They tend to avoid what makes them anxious even more. You know, what that does is make their right prefrontal cortex even more overactive. So what we need to do is balance out the activity of their two sides of the brain. What the left side does is approach behaviors. It's also associated with positive emotion. So what's approach behaviors? It's actually stepping into a productive behavioral pattern incrementally. So in the discussion in Melbourne and in Brisbane, we're going to talk about those incremental approaches to balance out the two sides of the brain so that person can rise out of those experiences of anxiety and depression. Another area that we're going to talk about is the tendency of all of us to spend roughly about 30% of our time outside of where we are. In other words, we spend 30% of our time daydreaming or ruminating, and it turns out that this could, on one hand, be a very great source of creativity, a way of integrating a lot of what we've conceptualized. On the other hand, people that have been traumatized and or depressed have a tendency to be ruminative in their default mode network.
to spend a whole lot of time thinking about and stewing in what has happened to them in the past. So we're going to talk about how to use that default mode network in a much more creative and productive way. Another very important area that needs to be addressed is what a person eats. What a person eats can make them revitalize their brain or, on the other hand, dismantle the foundation for any kind of therapeutic effort that we might employ with them. So I'm going to talk a lot about nutritional neuroscience. What do we know about what people eat that can either help the brain develop or, on the other hand, set the stage for more anxiety, more depression, or even dementia? Another area that we're going to talk about that I'm incredibly excited about is an area called psychoneuroimmunology. That's the interface between the mind, the brain, and the immune system. It turns out that many people that have had uncomfortable, adversive experiences early in life or throughout life have a tendency to develop chronic disease patterns. Some of them include inflammation. So we're going to talk a lot about inflammation and the, the role of chronic disease patterns and how we can help people get healthier because it's really about mind, body, brain, spirit, and that integrated model that's going to help people move ahead. One other area that we want to touch on is how people unfortunately feel that they are genetically predisposed to be stuck in a rut for the rest of their life. There's an incredibly exciting area called epigenetics that I frankly just can't get enough of. And this is all about whether or not we turn on or turn off genes that might make us susceptible to develop either depression, anxiety, and so on. So it's all about controlling our environment, controlling our experience, and controlling our behavior in such a way that we thrive into the future instead of dismantle ourselves and turn on those genes that make us more susceptible to have unfortunate experiences like anxiety and depression and perhaps overreact to those kinds of experiences. So I'm very much looking forward to coming to Melbourne and Brisbane and I'm looking forward to seeing you there.